Yo, what's up guys? Mike Deck is here chilling. Episode 3 of Katawa Shoujo. I've been saying Sojiro this whole time. It's actually Shoujo. Uh, so where we left off, uh, we just got to our new school and we are with Misha, who's the pink chick, and Shizune, who is their friend. Shizune is deaf and Misha is her translator and they plan on showing us around the school. So, do you like the school so far? We can show you around a little if you haven't had the time to walk around and familiarize. Just question mark because she's translating. Yourself with it. Misha stumbles with the hard word a bit. There we go. Making it stick out in her otherwise fluid translation. Thanks, that would be pretty helpful. Yeah, I just came straight to class today. Dot dot dot, she's translating. Ha ha ha. That's no good. You should always try to learn as much as you can where you're going before you go there. Not just with school, either. Always, even if it's a trip to the convenience store. Really, Shin-chan? Ha ha ha. That laugh. Learning about where you're going? I guess I didn't bother to do that, or just didn't care enough to do so. I didn't look forward to this, even if I committed myself to go along with it half-assedly. But anyway, I don't say anything, as Misha signs something that ends in a shrug. What was that? It seems like it was about me. I feel like slumping over in my seat. Both of them are smiling, but then it shrug hit me unexpectedly deep. Look down, are you okay? Don't take it the wrong way, please. I hate when people are afraid to ask questions. That's how people learn things, by asking. Wow, this girl is aggressive. Asking for, asking for help is perfectly normal. As much as, needed, as much as needing help, stop looking like you just failed the test. Wahahaha, I am evil. All right. Yeah, that's really great. Thanks. Dot dot dot. Ah, and another thing. You know how they call Shi-chan something so formal like ha Hakamichi, or class rap, all the time? Just call her Shi-chan. <laughs> and she's embarrassed about that, obviously. Ah ha ha. Okay, maybe that's too casual. You think? Uh, that's probably too aggressive. Maybe she's in there to be more appropriate. Yeah, that's probably a little better. Yep, yep, she's an A is fine. Heh, okay, that'd be a lot easier for me. I feel more at ease. Both of them seem so friendly, so I feel like an idiot for being so apprehensive earlier, especially about season A, who I assume would be all business. She kind of is all business. Well, it still seems like that. Just less so, I guess. She's a girl. Chill. Huh? Alright, we haven't even touched the assignment. We should start working now, or she chan will get mad. The assignment's also kind of long, so we should start if we want to. Damn it, stupid headphones. Anyway, we should start now if we want to finish it before the end of class. Wahaha, <laughs> that too. She's glares at the two of us impatiently. I don't need no sign language to understand that. Okay, okay, I get the message. And I guess we're just gonna start working on the assignment now. Okay, we're gonna walk around grounds together. It's a nice day today. Okay. The assignment's actually challenging to get through. Combining the aspects of being both difficult and unnecessarily long. Still, we finish it with a few minutes earlier than everyone else in the class, despite our late start. Shizune and Misha are really capable. They're quite different, though. The class rep is as calm and professional as she looks, while Misha is a lot more playful and girlish, not to mention a little more easily distracted. To be honest, the two of them did most of the work. I feel guilty about that. The clock tower bell rings, signaling the end of the period. Time for lunch! Without knowing what else to do, I follow Misha, who's beckoning me into the hallway and down the stairs. We descend even below the lobby where I met Muto, down to the bottom floor. This must be the cat. Yep. Just like everything in the school, the cafeteria seems spa too spacious and oddly modern in contrast to the co classic exterior. Its big windows open to the courtyard towards the main gate. It's the cafeteria. No shit. <laughs> Her enthusiastic statement of the obvious makes people around us stare, <laughs> but Misha doesn't seem to care, so we proceed to the line. Good, it's not just me. I would kind of be like, no shit, oh shit, whoops, <laughs> oh shit, no shit. There is a rather long list of menu options, which seems great until I realize that many of them are to accommodate students who need special diets. How nice, it almost feels like I'm back at the hospital, eating proportions measured with scientific precision to meet the needs of the patients. I pick something at random and follow Shizune to a table, sitting opposite of her. As I nibble indifferently at the food I'd rather not eat, Misha pokes me in the side to get my attention and points to Shizune. Dot dot dot. I don't understand signs, so the point escapes me. 
Maybe looking at a person who talks to you is proper and polite. Do you want to know something? Do I want to know something? Do I want to know something? I don't think I want to know something. But what the hell? What? About anything! Oh, okay. Yeah. We're your guides. Okay, ask something. Um... Well, I'm a reader, right? So I think I want to ask about the library. That's kind of rude. This makes... I don't know. I'm going to ask about the library. Oh, yeah. Is there a library in the school? Lately, I've gotten to reading a lot, so I'd like to check it out. Misha gives the kind of frown that makes it clear she doesn't consider reading a healthy hobby, but she picks up their smile again. There is, and it's in the second floor. We can show it to you sometime. <laughs> Thanks. I'm bored of you. <laughs> I return to my food while the girls talk between themselves. Misha and Susan they give signs back and forth very animatedly. Through sideways glances at me, but Misha refrains from translating. It's clearly about me then. Maybe they're talking about secret girls, but yeah, it's obviously about me. I quickly notice the conversation inside is not enough to fill a silence. No way. We arrived in the classroom early, but we're not the first. The dark haired girl I noticed before has slumped over her skin her desk at the last row. She jumps a little when Misha crashes into the room with the elegance of a rhino. She shrinks deeper in her seat. I can feel her tension all the way from here, as if she was slowly turning into stone just from our presence. Misha and Susan I d either don't notice or don't mind it, as they walk directly past her to their seats and begin to converse. I'm left wondering about her, even when the classroom slowly fills with other students and finally the teacher. Is he always late? Getting into the rhythm of the school feels strange, as if my brain remembers how this is done, but my body doesn't. Towards the end of the class, I start yawning and counting the minutes left. <laughs> Just like high school. I shouldn't be this tired on my first day of school. Everyone's this tired on their first day of school. It's not just you, kid. Don't worry about it. Maybe it's a long time spent in the hospital. Nope. No, well, I mean, I guess you are. That kind of counts, but no. It's still, it's still fine. Before long, the final bell rings. School is finally over for the day. Besides me, Misha and Susan are having a short conversation. After a bit of deliberation, Misha turns to me. Dot dot dot. Unfortunately, we can't stay and show you around to the heat chan. We got to hurry already since there's a lot of work for us to do. You'll find your way around here, I'm sure of it. Ah, wait, the teacher said I have to see the nurse. Where do I go? Is that so? We can at least show you that much. Come on, the nurses have their own buildings. We have to go outside. We join the flow of students making their way down their stairwell and outside, with the girls pointing out the other senior classrooms in the same hallway as ours. When we get outside, the girls make their way to the smaller building right next to the school. Okay, I need to use the bathroom so badly, so I'm going to edit this here and I'll be right back. I have returned with the elegance of a rhino. <laughs> anyway, when we get outside the schools, make the, the schools, the girls make their way to the smaller building right next to the school. There we go. It's built in the same style, so it looks like it's actually a part of the main building. Dot dot dot. This is the auxiliary building here. There are a lot of offices, official and important stuff inside, like the Yamaku Foundation office and all the nurses' office. They even have a swimming pool. How is that official? Physical therapy. Don't be silly, he chants for physical therapy. <laughs> of course. Anyway, all the nursing staff facilities are in there too. The nurse, the head nurse's office is on the first floor. You'll be fine from here, right? We'll be going then. See you tomorrow. Yeah, thanks. Bye-bye. A whole building for stuff that has nothing to do with the actual education. I guess it's necessary. Probably. I walk in hoping there's only a quick visit. On a white door on the left, there is a green cross with a text, Head Nurse, and a nameplate. A voice from inside responds to my knock almost immediately, but I can't quite make it out. It sounded a bit like an invitation to open the door, so I invite myself in. The room is not large, and it smells strange. A friendly-looking man turns around on his office chair to face me as I enter. His desk is neat and tidy, but the bin under the table is overflowing with used medical utensils, as there are at least a dozen coffee cup rings lingering on the desk. Hello there. What can I do for you today? He's younger looking, sort of rugged, but the dimples in his cheek wash that impression away when he smiles. Erm, um, are you the nurse? He smiles like a person who heard this very same question hundreds of times. Why, yes I am, it says on the door, you know? You can call me by my name or just the nurse, like everyone else. Of course, I shake off my confusion, realizing that I probably should grab his extended hand. 
His handshake is rather firm and friendly. Right, er, I'm a new student, and my homeroom teacher told me to come and meet you. My name is Hizao Nakai. His eyes light up with revelation as he snaps his fingers. I don't know if you heard the snap, but I heard the snap. Oh, you're that Nakai, as opposed to the other Nakais. I was reading your file in the morning. Some kind of chronic arrhythmia and related congenial heart muscle deficiency, right? I thought it was just arrhythmia. He gestures me to sit down in the vacant armchair in front of his desk. Uh, yes. Good. Well, you've probably been briefed by the school enough, so I'll just go over this quickly. We have all kinds of facilities available, mostly physical therapy. There's always someone from my staff around, even at night, so never hesitate to call. Basically, just the standard, you know. Yeah, the famous 24-hour nursing staff. This is like a hospital. Well, not exactly. For instance, we don't do brain surgery here. <laughs> that's actually pretty funny. Uh, yeah, it's a joke for that place. Yeah, it's just that it's really weird to have so many medical people at a school. You'll get used to it. I'm not so sure of that myself, but I don't let the nurse know it. Now, let me just find your file again. While he searches for something from his computer and shuffles stacks of papers around, I let my gaze wander around the room. It's the epitome of the gen generic, I like to say. Uh, beige walls and ceilings, dark gray and laminate flooring. Oh, laminate flooring, not inadmin. Laminate flooring and all the equipment you expect from a school nurse's office. Even the ridiculous education posters are hanging on all four walls. Finally, the, the nurse draws a thick file from a stack of similarly thick files and opens it. So you already have medication for the arrhythmia, just remember to take your pills every morning and evening or it won't be much help. Apart from that, do you do any sports? Rash stuff, like, I don't know, boxing? He grins to his own joke, but I don't. Uh, I played soccer with some classmates. Alright, I'm afraid we're not to recommend you refrain from doing that, at least for the time being. Oh. My lack of reaction makes him raise an eyebrow, but really I'm not too bothered by him forbidding me to kick around the ball. What a boring kid. See, I would be so... If I couldn't play tennis or anything, like... I have a uh, shoulder tendonitis currently, and I haven't been able to play for the past... Three months? I wasn't able to play any matches. And that was frustrating enough as hell. I only recently was able to start... I went serving yesterday. <laughs> I went serving yesterday and hit for the first time in like a month. And it's starting to feel better, you know, apart from like the weakness of just not hitting. But yeah, just not being able to play sports would suck in my opinion. But anyway, any kind of conclusion, concussion might be very dangerous to your heart and risk another attack is not a good idea. <laughs> Was the prevalence caused by a sudden concussion to the chest area? <laughs> not exactly. I sidestep the question acceptably. He glances over me over his papers with a more serious expression on his face. Still, you need to keep your body healthy, so some exercise will do you good. You need physical therapy, but you don't really need some heavy measures. Just get some light exercise regularly. Brisk walks, or even light jogging, jumping rope, the sort of thing. Swimming, maybe? There's a pool here. So I was told. You were very good. At any rate, I'm sure you'll be told this before, but you need to take care not to overexert yourself. He wags his finger to emphasize the point. No need, really. I've heard this a thousand times already. Absolutely no unnecessary risks. Take care of, your, take care of yourself. Okay. He goes over my papers one more time and sets them on the desk. Obviously content. Obviously, you know, obviously. Good, that's it then. Come meet me if you ever need something. I ushered out before I even realized it. A quick visit indeed. I end up standing in front of the main building and the auxiliary building, although to my eyes, they still look one and the same. I guess that's the auxiliary and that's the main. It's the first real look I get at the other students. So I watch people coming out of the school, going towards the gate or the dorms. Everyone seems to know where they are going. I mean, they've been here longer than you, so obviously. I still keep thinking that most of them don't look too special being students at a special school. Then again, neither do I. Does that make me one of them? One of us. One of us. <laughs> I should go somewhere too, to prevent me from getting lost. It's around dinner time, but I feel tired instead of hungry. The weariness in me only grows as I trudge towards the dorm, setting a little way apart from the main building complex. There's a garden of sorts between the school and the dorm, the shrubbery, flowers, and that overbearing smell of fresh crushed grass that fills the atmosphere. It draws on my mind that the smell feels novel because I haven't been outside at all for so long. The dorm building is big and made of red brick. 
Like the others, it feels way too pompous for what it is. I push forward, going inside. Okay, guys, so that'll end this episode. Um, I'm gonna try to keep these shorter so I can produce more content and just kind of go. Obviously, it's kind of boring at this point. We haven't really gotten through anything. But I, th I think I'd rather do that so you guys don't get too bored and want to keep up with the story. So I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Leave a like if you did, a comment, you know, show me some love. And peace out, guys. Mike Deck is out of here. Later.